Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good weekend, and welcome back to the Revolution, where I have been dispatched to a local shipyard in order to meet with a former revolutionary and attempt to get him to rejoin the cause. And if you think him shingles, there seems to be an issue with your sound at the moment, you're absolutely right, except it's not an issue with my sound. You can thank Ubisoft for this one, Dímelo. because playing on the radio next to Benito guess. here, is Ricky Martin's living this. la vida loca. She even and had us I really don't want to get a copyright strike. Nonsense. So, classy move there, Convince Ubisoft. Us Thank you. This isn't the only time this happens. Every time you get a full vehicle, the radio me. turns itself on and more copyright music. <laughs> so... <laughs> yeah, nice one, Ubisoft. Screwing over anybody trying to promote your game one DMCA strike at a time. You want me to steal one? Yeah, you, know, you can say what you like about Cyberpunk 2077. And I fully acknowledge that that game had its fair share of faults. But one thing that they absolutely did right you don't have any friends, was in the options menu with the ability to turn off copyrighted music tracks. And not only that, but some of the non-copyrighted music tracks in Cyberpunk were some of the best music in the game, so yeah, I'm just saying, Ubisoft, you have options. Anyway, cutting a long story short, Presidente Castillo's fascist boot boys are controlling the movement of people between the islands that make up the Yaren Archipelago by keeping their hands on all the fuel. This not only means that the Glorious People's Revolutionary Army can't get off the island, but it's also economically disastrous for the local fishermen who need fuel to power their fishing boats. So if you can sort out some fuel for them too, they might join our side. Clara, I'm at the depot. Libertad needs that fuel. So taking that depot isn't just about dealing with the army, it also means securing that gasoline. You've got to do this smart, Danny. Find some high ground and use your phone to scout out cameras and alarms. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Ah, high ground, like those uh, fuel storage tanks, for example. Those should do. It's generally a good idea to try to find some high ground and do a spot of reconnaissance before you initiate any kind of assault, even on something as relatively simple as a checkpoint, which this isn't, it's an actual base. It's a small base, but it's still a base with a lot of troops. Well, I say a lot of troops, maybe a dozen. More than you'd find in a checkpoint. There are a couple of reasons for that. You want to identify alarms and cameras in particular, and take out the alarms, so that when things do inevitably go south, as they all want to do, the bad guys can't call in reinforcements. This rifle that I'm using right now, by the way, the SOCOM variant of the M14, it's probably the best rifle in the game. Or at least it will be once I get some optics on it. Because you set this thing up to fire armor-piercing ammunition, you ensure that it has a suppressor, even if it's the shitty Resolve Air improvised suppressor that I have, which probably allows me to get five or six shots off before overheat and becoming useless. And you can pretty much headshot kill nearly anything. This rifle really is that good. And it's the second weapon that you get in the game. I mean, there are many, many weapons in this game. Honestly, there are like dozens. And I keep trying out new weapons and then discarding them and just coming back to this. In fact, the only reason I dropped this weapon, well, you don't drop weapons, you keep all of the weapons that you acquire, but the only reason I stopped using this weapon was because I got the actual full barrel length M14, which is just like this rifle, except Sniper. even more accurate. You do definitely need some form of optics on it, though, beyond the basic iron sights. Although in reality, the iron sights on this rifle, providing the sights are zeroed, enable you to easily drop targets at 300 metres and beyond. I mean, I can reliably hit targets at 300 metres with a rifle, and I have only the most basic of training. Even when I was in the Navy, I only actually got to shoot once a year. It's not hard. Anybody can be taught the basic principles of marksmanship that allow you to reliably hit man-sized targets at 300 meters. Trigger control, breath control, proper eye relief. It's not hard. You can be taught to do it. What I'm actually trying to do here is take out the control box for the alarm tower. That speaker tower with the green light on top. At the base, there's a control box. Shoot that out. Prevents any alarms from being raised. Unfortunately, I can't quite see the control box from here. Not going to be able to see it from down here either, but there's some ammo. So, 
There's a sniper on the tower in the middle of the fuel depot. And he's only about 100 metres away. And even with iron sights, again, if you've had even the most rudimentary of rifle training, with iron sights you should be able to take a headshot at this kind of range. Except you can't really do it effectively in Far Cry 6. You really do need optics. I mean, you can hit him from this range, but getting a headshot is tricky. So, I managed to put enough shots into him. Although he can be revived by a medic until I put some more shots into him. Uh, to put him down before he could raise the alarm. Once you get the optics on this weapon, um, single shot headshot kills at that sort of range are easy. Now, I haven't been spotted, but the troops have been alerted to the fact that there's a sniper around, so they haven't actually raised the alarm because they haven't seen any revolutionaries. They're coming looking for me. Now this is good. Because it means it's drawn them all over here. And there's a zip line I can use to get down there and take out that alarm before I actually get spotted. So we're gonna do that. Better watch my step. This valve will help drain the oil and prevent an explosion. Turning that valve will award me with bonus fuel when I take this base. But for now I need to get that alarm taken care of. Job done. Now you'll notice that all of the troops have basically run over there to investigate where they thought the shots were coming from. And again, if I actually had the optics on this thing yet, the guy to the rear would have been dead from a suppressed headshot kill, and the guy to the front would have been dead from a suppressed headshot kill before we had the time to turn around and figure out what the noise was. As things stand, all I've actually managed to do is alert everybody to where I am. So instead, because I've just quiet it and it seems like it might be fun, even though it is extraordinarily badly textured. <laughs> I've switched to what I believe is an RPD, Soviet light machine gun. Even though the foregrip, at least, isn't modelled correctly and is extremely badly textured. The chief problem with the RPD... Oh, hang on a minute. You shot my crocodile. <laughs> Sorry, I can't get away from how badly textured that incorrectly modelled foregrip is, but the chief problem with the RPD, as you can probably tell, is, at least until I get it modded up, um, there's so much recoil on it, because you can't actually deploy a bipod and fire it the way it should be fired, uh, there's so much recoil on it that it makes it all but useless at anything other than point blank range. Something that I didn't really realise until the first time I tried to use it, which is here. Also, something else that was very strange that I noticed when I was playing this mission. I don't know if you noticed, but when I took out the officer in charge, Danny said, hmm, a key. So, every enemy facility, whether that's something as simple as a road checkpoint or something like this fuel depot, has a stash room. And the stash room is locked until you take out the person in charge and loot their key. That's the body there. I am now close enough to loot them, but no, no loot has actually appeared. That's because when I shot her, the key in her pocket teleported into my pocket. <laughs> I could have killed her from 100 metres away with a rifle, and I would have still looted the key. It's a bit, well, convenient, I suppose, which is probably why they've done it, though. Right? Whatever. Not really game-breaking, is it? So anyway, that's the fuel depot liberated. Unfortunately, I did not get the Commandante. He was on an inspection tour of the various different fuel facilities. And wasn't it this one? Benito, the fuel station is open again. You can take as much as you need. Okay, Danny. But now is the hard part. The Comandante Rosario is a murderer. And she's not going to stop. As long as she's alive, this island is safe. I hear you, Benito. Yeah, what I hear is, thanks for enough free fuel to keep my fishing boat running for the rest of my life, but it's just not quite enough, is it? Yeah. First thing I'm going to do though is head to the nearest workbench and sort out a decent scope for this rifle. And now it's off to find Commandante Rosario. Now there are only a limited number of military sites on this island that she could be visiting, so it's just a question of, um, well, checking them all out and eventually I'm going to get lucky. Danny, I hear you're heading into the province of Bencejo. Yeah, taking care of a Commandante problem for Benito. Watch yourself. 
The military in Bensehu is much stronger, better equipped, and better trained. Find some high ground, do some scouting before you pull the trigger. Remember, rule number nine, right tool for the right job. Rule number ten, shut the fuck up. You're an adult and can make your own decisions. Spread your wings and fly, little bird. That must be Rosario. Hey, nice. Found her first time. Right, let's scope out the rest of this... Well, whatever this base is, I'm not entirely sure. Note that my magic cell phone app is telling me exactly what types of ammunition is best needed. used against these targets, but honestly, you really don't need to worry too much about that. Because this rifle, with armor piercing rounds and headshots, is going to kill just about anybody. People were asking in the previous video, well, what difficulty setting are you playing on? This all seems very, very easy. There are only two difficulty settings in Far Cry 6. There's story mode, which is very, very easy. And this, which is also very, very easy. The game could definitely have used more than two really simple difficulty levels. And again, I am a bit crap, so I'm not really complaining. I can't really see that sniper's head from here. There's too much foliage in the way. I mean, I could move, but yeah, ain't nobody got time for that. Oh, nearly got him. Did manage to finish him off before he could raise the alarm. And the benefit, of course, of going for the people on the high ground, like towers and platforms, means that when you do take them down, the body drops and it's not immediately visible to everybody else because they're down on ground level and the body's in an elevated position. Back up take out the alarm the so they can't call in any reinforcements. And I'm not sure I have actually scanned and tagged everybody in that camp. Generally speaking, you can usually tell if you're close enough because there's a sort of red fuzzy blob on your mini-map to indicate that there's somebody still in there but you haven't actually tagged them yet. So I'm just doing another double check. But, yeah, I think I've tagged everybody now. Then again, I'm not exactly known for my great subtlety, am I? That takes care of Rosario. Adios, asshole. That didn't just take care of Rosario, that took care of almost everybody inside the camp. <laughs> okay, Benito. Rosario is dead, and the fuel is flowing again. See, si, carajo. I admit, I got my doubts about Clara, but I never doubted you, mija. I know a thing or two about looking out for your own. Tell Clara I'm heading to her camp. She's got our boats and our support. Gracias, Danny. Right, anyway, finish off the survivor. And then don't forget to loot everything, in particular. Restock your ammunition. And open the weapon stash. And I've gotten myself what looks like a legendary version of the Czech Scorpion machine pistol. Which is nice. And then it's back to report the good news to the People's Commissar for Liberty and Equality. You want us to take down Anton's ships? We're goddamn fishermen. Then leave us to die again, compai. The fuck are you doing? Try it. It's fun. What's the plan, Hefa? For Anton to see us from the fucking capital? Yes. Well, it's working. You've got 20 minutes until Anton's forces come. So you better start running. Go! I said, run! Rules of the guerrilla, Juan Cortez. A revolution is not won by the fearless. It's won by the feared. What does Anton Castillo fear? Free elections, free expression, free outcasts. Ayara free of Castillos. But he will fear nothing. Unless you are willing to die for your freedom today. Not when we have more believers or more guns, today. Because today I'm going to put a hole through Castile's warships! I am not fearless. I am scared as hell. But I promise you one thing. I will be feared. Viva Libertad. Viva Libertad. Viva Libertad. Let's go home, Grias. Does she know what she's doing? Who cares, Danny? She knows what we need. See you from the sky, guerrilla. 
I have to admit, I really didn't like Clara much at first. I thought she was a fairly one-dimensional, stereotypical, communist, revolutionary character. But she does grow on you. She's not stupid. She's smart, tough, resourceful. She knows what needs to be done, even if the idea of doing it scares her, and she knows how to motivate people to get it done. I did actually start to like her as a character. And that can be quite scary in a Far Cry game, because as soon as you start to like a character in one of these games, it usually means that at some point down the road you're probably going to have to kill them. Anyway, cutting a long story short, we have the fuel that we need to use our boats to actually get off this fairly isolated part of the Yaran Archipelago and get to the, well, mainland isn't the right word, but it'll do. The problem, because there's always a problem, is that we need to run a blockade. There are two warships blockading the harbour. Actually, warships is a bit of a generous term, but you, you'll know what I mean when you see them. And they're blockading the harbour, and we need to take them out before we can get out. Well, when I say we need to take them out, I mean Libertad, the Glorious People's Revolutionary Army. And it certainly is set up as if there's going to be an all-arms Libertad assault on these two warships, but in actual fact it's really just you. So. <laughs> I mean, they certainly talk a good fight, but when the bullets start flying, yeah, it's basically just you. Clara! I'm close to Castillo's ships. Muy bien, Danny. You'll be boarding those ships as our assault element. Julio, where are you? I'm in the lighthouse. Sitting pretty with an RPG in perfect line of sight to the ships. Want to hear your voice, Raisa? Top of the tower. Round in the chamber. Scope dialed in. Juan? Buckle up, guerrillas! Air Juan is in the skies and my bullets are hungry! Remember, we take those ships and we punch a fucking hole straight to our island. We get one shot at this, Libertad. See you on the other side. Danny, you want to use your camera to check out the defenses on your ships. Look before you leap. If Lita was with us now, she'd be smiling. And halfway to those ships already. If Lita was here? I'd kick her ass for keeping you a secret. Take care of yourself, Julio. Gotta take so as you can alarm. see, they're not purpose-built warships, they're militarized cargo ships. But, you know, that's fine. A lot of countries that can't afford to purpose-build their own navies do this, and they work. Particularly if your chief it's opposition are a bunch of watch. yahoos with RPGs in rigid inflatable boats. But what kind of bothers me is, I don't know if you can see on the bows and the sterns, they've got turreted 76mm Otto Malara naval autocannon. And those things are exceptionally dangerous, particularly if your main form of opposition are a bunch of yahoos with RPGs in rigid inflatable boats. And they've gone to the trouble of modelling them and putting them on the ships. But they're completely non-functional. Here in the tanker wars in the 1980s, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard would put to sea in rigid inflatable boats around the Straits of Hormuz, armed with RPGs, and they would go out and attack shipping. And they were remarkably effective, because, well, if you're in a warship, a purpose-built warship, armed with a 5-inch deck gun up front and a whole bunch of surface-to-surface and surface-to-air missiles, none of those are particularly effective against a bunch of yahoos in rigid inflatable boats armed with RPGs. What you need are heavy machine guns and autocannons, which a lot of these purpose-built warships just weren't armed with. Militarised cargo ships like these, however, have been armed with exactly that type of weaponry. I was actually quite impressed with Ubisoft. I thought, wow, they've, they've taken some time to actually stop and think about this. They've equipped their militarised cargo ships with exactly the kind of weapons that they probably would have and which would be effective in these exact circumstances. They went to the trouble of modelling them and putting them on the ships and they're completely non-functional. So I very carefully scouted out both ships from the safety of the lighthouse, although I didn't spot everybody on board. And then the second I stepped on board, I did at least go to the trouble of trying to silently take down the closest visible threat and completely ignored the security camera right next to him. Oh well, never mind. Keep your head down. I'm letting these 
Close the Esrasa. They do a fairly good job of making it look as if the rest of the rebels are actually taking part. I mean, Juan's up there in his helicopter and he's firing rockets and machine guns at everybody, but he's not actually killing anything. They're only making it look as if you're not the one doing all the work. But, well, you know, I've played enough Far Cry games at this point to understand that this is how things do actually work. And, uh, yeah, they, they do a reasonably good job of of making it feel as if you're taking part in a wider assault instead of just doing everything yourself. And this is a very enjoyable mission with multiple stages. You do well to take advantage of these guardrail mounted heavy machine guns because eventually Castillo's air force is going to turn up. And at this stage of the game you don't really have anything that's capable of taking down an aircraft easily. I mean the Supremo will work but it's got like a four or five minute cooldown and that's just not enough so you need to take advantage of these deck-mounted heavy machine guns. And they will get the job done. In fact, shooting at large vehicles like these MIA helicopters is exactly what these heavy machine guns are best used for. I mean, you can shoot infantry with them, but the amount of kick and recoil on them makes it not ideal. You're better off using a rifle. So, and this really is a fun mission, because while you're in the process of clearing both ships of enemy troops, the helicopter assault turns up, and once you've dealt with that, naval reinforcements turn up as well. There is no shortage of things to shoot at here. And I could be wrong, but I think more reinforcements will continue to turn up by air and sea until you finally clear both of these ships of all enemy troops. Are we done? They're going to Clara. It's over. Let's get the fuck out of here. We couldn't have done it without you, Danny. We're not done yet. I'm going to hang back, set charges, and make sure those ships are blown to shit. Check in when you're done, Julio. Copy that. Danny. I'm on my way to pick you up. Don't be in any great rush to leave right now, however, because there is loot on the bridge. Once you've picked that up, feel free to abandon ship and let Julio set his mostly completely ineffective demolition charges. What are you talking about, Jingles? Well, glad you asked. Viva Libertad, Danny. Keep an eye open for the pretty explosions. There they are. Good job, Julio. Well, except no. Because you come back to the island later and both ships are still there. <laughs> Hell of a fireworks show. <laughs> I have to give you credit, Clara. You fucking did it. We did it, Danny. That was the difference. What's your plan when you reach America? Me and my friend Alejo were going to work shit jobs. Until we could scrape up some money, open a body shop. If the Yankee blockade taught us anything, it's how to keep things running when you got nothing. That's the dream? Sure, Yankees might pay you to park their cars or pick their fruit, but you'll never be one of them. The American dream doesn't come in our color. Okay. If we're shitting on dreams, what are you going to do if you win, Presidente Garcia? The next president won't last six months before they are assassinated. Wait, what? It's the truth. Won't free elections solve that? What happened to your list? It's a vision, Danny. But I'm not as naive as you think. This revolution will free Yara, but won't fix it. When we take the capital, Yara will be burning. It will be civil war, factions, warlords, born back coups. Take your pick. Yarens will be killing Yarens for a generation. Uh-huh. This fight will take the rest of my life. Yara is stuck in a cycle of tyranny and revolution. My job is to show us how to break it. This isn't a dream, is it? You have to do this. What makes you say that? No one would choose this. No, Danny. Everyone who follows me, who joins Libertad, chooses this. But you know, I can really see you stocking shelves in one of those giant Yankee supermarkets. <laughs> Fuck you. No, no, no. I just think you'd look good in a little uniform, name tag, maybe a fancy apron. <sighs> Leave me out of your fantasies, Clara. Like I said, Clara is not stupid. She knows exactly what the result of this revolution is likely to be. She's a very smart, intelligent character. I like her. It's just a shame I'm probably going to have to yeah, kill her at the end of the game. <laughs> my favorite guerrillas. I missed my island. Tonight we celebrate. I'm sorry, Heifer. 
What's wrong? Julio never checked in. Libertad will kill you fucking through your eyes! Traitors! Criminales! Puta! Mio, the difference between a true yarn and a fake yarn it can be hard to see, but it's there. A true yarn understands that loyalty to country is key to his survival. Not justice, not love, not even family. Loyalty to a vision that looks beyond themselves. Come mierda. Fake yarns love to be the outcasts. They are addicted to their selfish perversions. Chaos. Lies. Like wild dogs. But dogs can be broken. They can serve paradise. And if a dog refuses to break, like Julio here, like Clara Garcia, like Libertad, then we must put them down. Papa, you've proved your point. Put Julio down. This is a difficult step to paradise, Mio. I understand. But when you achieve our vision, I promise you, there will be no more steps. I'm coming, Lita. Then, enjoy the show. Julio checked in. Proof of death. Join your friend Lita in a suite hereafter. I keep my promises, Danny. You wanted a boat, you got a boat. It's a beautiful piece of shit, but it'll get you to a Yankee beach. One with the naked fatties. You two are just gonna let me leave? Bullshit. You could have sold us out a long time ago. You're my best kid here. I can't promise you victory, I can't even promise you survival. What I can promise you is this. You are the lucky one. Actually, you promised me a ticket to Miami. That usually work? 50-50. Yeah, well, not today. Where's my boat? Oh, there's my boat. Well, is that it? After everything I've done for these people, that's the boat. Well, I suppose I probably shouldn't really be too choosy. Let's face it, Cubans have travelled to America in far worse. So, uh, Juan? Clara? Does anybody actually know the way to Miami? Believe it or not, Clara is actually true to her word, and you can end the game right here. Just, you know, be careful to avoid any of President Castillo's Coast Guard ships. I mean, just sail west. You're in the Caribbean. Eventually, at some point, you'll bump into America. It's a fairly big place, and it's difficult to miss. Just keep heading west, and sooner or later, you will find yourself lying on a beach, sipping those mojitos. Despite the tragedy, the company promises that its secretive new resort park will soon be open to the public. In other news, war has ended in Yara. President Anton Castillo announced that Clara Garcia, the leader of the terrorist group Libertad, was killed by his special forces. And as the pandemic tightens its grip on the globe, the federal government may impose another nationwide lockdown. But first, how about something a little more upbeat? Hang on a minute. That sounds like Gloria Estefan and the Miami Sound Machine. 
Copyright striking coming in three, two, oh, thanks Ubisoft. <laughs> God damn it. And it was all going so well. <laughs>